Hey girls, Kaylee here. This is my sister Anna. Hi. And we're going to be doing a little bobby pin or how to bobby pin video. I decided to use Anna as my very beautiful model because it's a little bit hard to demonstrate on my own head and I wanted to show you on somebody else's hair. She also has a different hair texture than mine so I can kind of talk a little bit about what it's like to deal with thick hair because I know thick hair really does have a hard time dealing with bobby pins. Right? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Alright, the first thing you want to think about when you're bobby pinning, especially if you're having a hard time bobby pinning, is that you're using the right kind of bobby pins. Because if you use the little flimsy ones from the drugstore, it can be really, really hard to pin your hair. And it'll be really understandable if you can't get the bobby pins to stay. Right? Because we've, we've tried those before. Yeah. Where we've they're, just bought lots of different kinds. They're definitely, definitely more harm than good. <laughs> it's true, because we've been through like this whole like years long thing of yeah. trying to find good bobby pins. Yep. From the drugstore, the ones that I like are the Conair Secure Hold bobby pins. Those are good because they have little like lines cut into the inside of the bobby pin, so it actually like grabs onto the hair better. And it's a kind of sturdy material, so you're not going to stretch it apart too easily. But my favorite bobby pins, we've been using these over the past like seven or eight months, I think. And these are Mariana, I'm going to do the whole like YouTuber reach into the camera thing. <laughs> Mariana bobby pins. And these are from Sally's. You can get this entire one pound box for seven dollars. So that is really good. Like we've both been just like pulling out of this thing and it's still like half full. Yeah. So. We really love these. What I like about them is that they are really, really tight. Like, they're really hard to pull apart, but that means that it's going to be really tight down on your hair. It is a flimsier uh, material, so you will stretch them out a little easier, but they do hold pretty well. The other thing you want to think about whenever you're going to bobby pin is that your hair texture is kind of conducive to bobby pinning. Because if your hair is really slippery or really fine, the bobby pins are just going to fly out of it. Um, and even if you have really thick hair, if it's really slippery, it's going to be hard to hold those bobby pins into it. So, one thing you can do if you know your hair is really nice and silky soft like Anna's, or if you are just having a hard time in general, you can add some texture onto your hair by either putting a dry shampoo onto your hair. This one is um, one of our favorites. It's Batiste. Um, we go through this one like crazy. And Or you can put a little bit of hairspray on your hair. And the hairspray is just going to put a little bit of texture onto your hair and a little bit of grip. So that when you put that bobby pin in, it's going to hold on. And it's going to have something to hold on to instead of just slipping right off of your hair. The other thing that you can do, and I found this out when I was researching one of my Hunger Games tutorials, is you can actually take your hairpins and you can just like put them on a table or on your hand or whatever and just like, you know, take a handful and spray them with some dry shampoo and that puts the texture right onto them and it makes them like hold so much better. When I heard that trick, I didn't really think much of it. I didn't think it was going to be that great, but I tried it and it works so well. So now whenever I'm doing like a big updo, I always dry shampoo my um, bobby pins first. Oh, Isn't that weird? That. Yeah. That's really cool. One more thing, if the dry shampoo and then the hairspray is not enough for you, or if you really just want a little bit of extra hold, teasing your hair is actually going to make those bobby pins hold like crazy. Don't worry, I'm not going to tease your hair That's too what much. I was just thinking. <laughs> I'm going to make her hair stand out to here. Now, teasing is kind of a scary thing, but you really only need a little bit of it. And what that's going to do is it's going to kind of mat your hair together just a little bit to give your bobby pin something more to hold on to. Because if you have straight, silky hair like this, that bobby pin is sitting on ice. It's just going to go sliding out of the hair. So you want to give it some traction so that it can hold on to, which these things will do, but the teasing is really the biggest thing. So a couple options with that, you can separate out, if you know you're going to be like pinning all this hair back into this one place, you can separate out your base here and tease this little base. And then that way, whenever you lay this hair down and you pin back, you've got that little teasing to go into. Or you can tease down the hair that you're going to use and then actually kind of use that teasing and just smooth it on top. So let's say you teased it and then you smoothed it and then you pulled it back it's actually going to hold a lot better than if you had just pulled it back. Alright, so the next thing you want to think about is that you don't end up taking a section that's too big or too small. If it's too small, the, hip, the bobby pin, it might stay in there at first, but it'll eventually fall out. Or if it's too large, you might have the same problem. Either it will just come right out, or the hair will fall out, or over time it's not going to hold up very well. Because if I took like all of Anna's hair on this side of her head and wanted that to hold with the bobby pin, First of all, it would be hard to fit it all into the bobby pin. not going to fit, and then as soon as I let go, half of it's come out again. So you want to play around with it and find the size of sections that works for your hair type. It's all going to depend on the density of your hair and the texture of your hair, whether it's fine or thin. Just know that that's something to look out for. So if you're finding that you have problems with pinning your hair, just look and see the sections that you're taking. Are my sections really small and do I have fine hair? 
probably need to take bigger sections. If you have really thick hair or kind of coarse hair, you probably need to take smaller sections, especially because your hair's just initial diameter is so much bigger. Alright, so once you've got your bobby pins right and you've got your texture right, then it's time to go ahead and start working on putting your hair pins in. So I think one of the big things in creating a really secure style is making sure that you're interlocking your pins. Because this little guy standing on its own can't really do a lot, but if you give it a buddy to hold it up, then it can do a lot more. So the biggest thing, I always say this in my tutorials, is crisscross your pins. If you don't know what that means, it's like taking one, like so, and then take another one and you actually pin so that it goes through it. It makes a little X. I'll show you what that looks like on the hair. For example, if Anna wanted to pin this piece of her hair back, she would just pull this back, and then take a bobby pin, pin it one way, and then take the next pin and open it up wide enough to fit the entire other bobby pin into it, and slide it all the way down your hair so that it kind of eats that first bobby pin up and you've got your little crisscross right here. And that's a lot more secure. Like I can just sit here and do this number. It's not gonna go anywhere. The basic thing is that you wanna be interlocking your pins. The most basic way to do that is to make your little X by crisscrossing them. But you can do that many, many times over and with more than one or more than two bobby pins. You can do it with three, four, five, six. You just wanna make like a net of bobby pins or a mat of bobby pins into your hair. <laughs> and that's really ideal for if you're pulling your hair backwards like so and you want to have your hair stick right here so you would put your first pin in up this way because if you think about it it's got the little loop at the bottom which is going to hold the hair so you put it up like that it's going to hold the hair while you went reach and grab your other pin to stick on top like that it's going to hold it in place really nicely if you're going to do it vertically or you're going to have the hair position vertically it's pretty nice and easy because you just have to go horizontally with both your pins here and here some times where you don't want to do the same little panning that we just talked about where the pins are kind of laying against each other. You've got one pin going this way and the one pin going this way and you can see them on top. Sometimes you want to be a little bit more subtle like with a braid or with a bun. So when you're in those situations what you want to do is to actually position the pins into the braid and crisscross within the braid. That can be a little tricky because you're working under the surface so here's what you're going to do. First of all instead of tilting your bobby pin so that it slides along the hair you actually want to point it like it's an airplane kind of coming in for landing. It's coming in at a 45 degree angle. You're going to push it so that it goes into that little braid and just push it in and slide it along. And what it's going to do is that one end of the bobby pin is going to reach under and grab all this hair that's laying down right here. The other end of the bobby pin is going to come through here and grab that bottom layer of the braid. So it's going to be incorporating that hair and holding it there. And then this top hair is just going to kind of go along with it. Then you're going to repeat that with the other side at the opposite angle so we can make the rest of our X. So I'm keeping a mental picture that I just put that one bobby pin in like this. So now I'm going to take this bobby pin, bring it in at a 45 degree, and make sure that it meets up with that first bobby pin and push it all the way through. Then you can just let that go. And you've got your braid that's held together. It's crisscrossed so it's going to stay really well but you can't see it at all. The other way that you might want to be crisscrossing your pins is into a bun. It's similar to how we did with the braid, but it's a tiny, tiny bit different because we're dealing with a little bit more. And you can bring your um, pins in at a more horizontal angle to the head because you've got more to cover it up right there. So what you're going to do is go ahead and position your first body pin into the hair. Basically just sliding it along the scalp and making sure that it picks up some hair there. You can see that I'm opening up my pins so that it catches a little bit more hair and because these bobby pins return to their shape really nicely, it's going to close on itself and catch all that hair back in there. So you've positioned your first bobby pin going this way like so. So you want to be able to again position another one creating an X. So I've got this one going this direction so I'm going to place the next one going this direction. And that way inside of here they're going to meet up be buddies, hold the hair up. And you can continue to repeat that around the hair. I usually like to go at every corner of the bun. So I do the top, the bottom, and each side. And then you just add more pins as you need. Alright, so let's say that you've got this pinned on each of the four corners and they're crisscrossed and it's feeling okay, but you have a little area that's feeling kind of loose. Let's say this area is feeling a little loose. Just go back in with one of your pins 
kind of try to feel, you can kind of feel at the top if you feel your finger around where the bobby pins are, because I'm sure by now you've kind of forgotten where they all are. So let's say, okay, I can feel that I have one right here. So I'm going to put this one here where it feels loose and tilt it so that it goes into those bobby pins that we already did. That way you're creating this really, really strong net of hair, or net of pins that's really, really going to hold that hair up. It's not going anywhere. Is it? Nope. No this is way. really stuck. I like it. <laughs> so basically in doing that, we're pinning into our crisscross, so we're adding more to it. And that way you can use any little weak areas and use the, the pins in places where you're strong to your advantage by pinning the little weak areas into the stronger areas. And that makes your overall style a lot stronger and a lot more long-lasting.